Let's move on now to the mechanisms of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction and pulmonary hypertension in interstitial lung disease. So what is the role of HPV in respiratory diseases? Well, let's highlight a couple of diseases and contrast them. If we look at high altitude pulmonary edema, there's an exaggerated or over-exaggerated response of HPV, and it results in overperfusion of the non-constricted pulmonary vasculature. Now we can treat that or prophylactically manage that with calcium channel blockers like nifedipine, and that can reduce the incidence of high altitude pulmonary edema from 63% down to 10%. In pneumonia, we have vasoconstriction due of the pulmonary arteries due to HPV, diverting blood flow away from disease alveoli. Uh, alveoli are they're filled with infection and fluid as a result of the pneumonia, with diversion of blood flow away to regions that are better ventilated so we can optimize ventilation and perfusion matching. So let's look at the pulmonary artery smooth muscle cell and better understand what causes contraction of the pulmonary artery smooth muscles. What kind of environment is necessary for that to happen? So under normal oxygen conditions, there's a generation of reactive oxygen species in the pulmonary artery smooth muscle cells, and that occurs at the mitochondrial level in the electron transport chain, namely in complexes one and three and they produce superoxide, that's O2 minus. O2 minus or superoxide is then converted by superoxide dismutase into hydrogen peroxide or H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide is then capable of donating a hydrogen to our oxidized redox couples, NAD, NADP, and FAD. And by doing so, helps maintain the calcium channels in a closed state by keeping the potassium channels in an open state and allowing potassium to efflux freely out of the cell. That keeps the resting membrane potential of the cell at minus 60 millivolts. So what happens in this condition of hypoxia? Well, with hypoxia, there's limited oxygen and hence limited superoxide and as a result, limited hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, so we don't have as much hydrogen to donate to NAD, NADP, and FAD. And as a result, closes the potassium channels and results in an increase in intracellular potassium. Well, when that intracellular potassium builds up, it changes the charges and it increases the resting membrane potential of the cell to minus 20 millivolts. What this does is triggers the depolarization and opens calcium channels, causing an influx of calcium into the cell and ultimately contraction of the smooth muscle. So when that pulmonary arterial contraction occurs, it can have a quick onset in a matter of seconds, but builds over time, even up to 120 minutes in a phasic response. That HPV is potentiated by acidosis, hypercapnia, a reduced mixed venous O2, and hyperthermia, and decreased by just the opposite. But other additional things that can decrease hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction include elevated left atrial pressures and hemodilution. There are other modulators of hypoxic vasoconstriction. HPV is increased by endothelium-derived vasoconstrictors, that includes endothelin and thromboxane, and it's inhibited by endothelium-derived vasodilators like nitric oxide and prostacycline. Medications can also result in inhibiting HPV and causing vasodilatation, and that's classic for calcium channel blockers. So there are multiple mechanisms that can come together to elicit pulmonary hypertension, and that includes acute hypoxia, chronic hypoxia, parenchymal destruction of lung tissue, and overproduction of endothelin-1. In parenchymal destruction of lung tissue related to lung disease, that can result in a reduction in the number of blood vessels and reduction in the capacitance of the pulmonary vascular system so that 
there's an impairment of the ability of the blood vessels to vasodilate with increases in cardiac output. Endothelin-1 happens to be a very potent vasoconstrictor. There are other targets that can be activated by hypoxia that occur at the level of the macrophage that results in increase in interleukins and cytokine production. And this, as a result, can augment vasoconstriction and ultimately pulmonary hypertension. Interestingly, increased secretion of IL-6 and hypoxic lungs results in decreased expression of the BMPR2 gene, the gene associated with pulmonary hypertension, that's mutated in up to 70% of patients who have the hereditary variety of pH. HIF-1-alpha and HIF-2-alpha are also augmented or upregulated as a stress response in endothelial cells triggered by hypoxia. And that can result with an upregulation of HIF-1-alpha as a shift of the cell metabolism toward anaerobiasis and includes transcription of erythropoietin that results in more red blood cell production and VEGF with angiogenesis in those hypoxic regions.